Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We have uh, a very special guest with us. Uh, Joe is with us, and of course, we have our host, Watchful. How are you, uh, Watchful? How are you doing today, brother? Pretty good. I'm really thankful to be able to spend time studying. I, I was looking at the uh, the mark of the beast and all the different things that people have said about it. I was I spent the day looking for. Um, pictures of the Codex Vaticanus, which is one of the hmm. um, or, origin texts that they translated Revelation 13 out of, hmm. trying to just verify some things. So it's been a fun study day. Awesome. Joe, how about you, brother? Uh, I, I typically watch the markets every day as, as one of the indicators, right, as we're getting into these end times. And, yeah. you know, you look at gold here for like the last month, month and a half, and it is just skyrocketing. And as I've always yeah. said, and some of the the uh, experts I've listened to, it yeah, is now um, becoming un unhinged. The manipulation is now starting to stop. They're still going to monkey hammer it down, I'm sure, at some point. But yeah. to me, this is a true indicator that the system is about to unravel. I really uh, think I, that this year it, it's it's done. And, I and to, what watch, to what Watchful I, was saying here is, right, they've got to... In, institute the mark of the beast they've got all of that stuff ready to go i mean they've got to let the system go yeah it's uh cool to hear you say that as watchful knows i i spent um quite a while uh day trading bitcoin leverage trading i i've kind of stepped away from it here lately just because i have not had time because you literally as you know you literally have to live in the charts if you're going to aggressively leverage day trade but um you're right. The the DXY, the dollar, I don't know why it's still sitting at 104. Um, they're manipulating its value to keep it from crashing. Uh, all the signs are there for it to capitulate. So uh, you nailed it with their manipulation. It's just, it's just a matter of time. And to see, because people are bailing on the dollar. You can see it. Uh, people are taking their money out of the U.S. markets. They're taking it out of the dollar system and they're putting it in gold. They're putting it in Bitcoin. They're putting it in land. They're putting it anywhere except the dollar. Yeah, I mean, what I know I was talking to, to a couple of friends as well and they were asking, you know, what do you do now at this point? And <laughs> to your point, Chris, it's like you get into real assets. I, I don't. Yes. We'll talk about this probably as the... Uh, the podcast goes forward, but the way I look at it and what the Lord's been speaking to me is get into real assets. One, two, land is the most important of all. And we'll Absolutely. get into that a little bit because it's, there's a covenant agreement that goes back to Abraham that was given to Moses, that was given to Joshua. And we can look at Joshua one a little bit later here. But so to me, the land is the most important because from the land Agreed. then everything goes out, right? Yes. You have the art, um, you, you've got the security, you've got the sustaining community. So, I mean, it, it's the land is the key. A hundred percent. And uh, we've been telling the community that, and it's something I've been pretty vocal to my parents, and I may even have mentioned it to Watchful as well, that it's extremely important right now if you have the means to not have any debt over your property um, because they will leverage that debt against you. So... Yeah. Um, you're, you're a hundred percent right. And land is the key because, you know, Bitcoin, they can manipulate it and they will. And, you know, the value of tangible precious metals, sadly, they can manipulate that as well. But the, the one thing that will be difficult for them to manipulate, which I'm sure they'll figure out a way is how to deal with the landowners. Hmm. No, I, I agree with that one. Yeah, I, I'd be curious to get your, your take on um, how they will go about doing that. I mean, the, con the control obviously is coming from the, from the banks, central banks, all the way at the top, all the way down. But as, it, as everything becomes unhinged, you have civil unrest breaking out, right? Civil war, as we know, is coming as well. Then we have invading armies. Not potentially, we will. The Lord has shown me that as well. We'll have Chinese troops. I know he has shown me. I know we'll have Russian. But when all of that stuff unfolds, how will the powers to be, be able to control that, right? 
Well, it's a question I have. I don't know that I have the answer. Yeah, it, it and what I have found is they're man, they're maneuvering around some of these core things like BlackRock is buying all the major banks and funding institutions so that anybody that has a mortgage is their mortgage is going to be dictated through a, a central control point, which they will use as a manipulation tactic. And not only that, the insurance companies are being acquired by the same organization that is making it nearly impossible to maintain the proper legal liability coverage for your property and other assets or if you're a business owner that is not um you know esg compliant um and i'm seeing that firsthand in my day job um they are making it very difficult to operate um uh, nearly impossible to get a line of credit or any type of funding through any American bank right now. And then we're being hit at another angle where our insurance companies are not covering us because we're not uh, ESG compliant. Yep. Yeah. That, it, so. Go ahead. Um, no, I was, you're welcome to comment and I'm sure your mind is, uh, working on that one too. No, it is. I mean, I look at God's provision and his hand of protection over his people, yeah. right? I think there's, there's only so much we can figure out, but the Lord in, in his ways, he's going to protect us. Those that have actually, right. I'll say dialed in, followed him, been obedient to the calling here in the, I can't say the last three to four years. But in fact, I know we were talking, Watchful and I were here uh, prior to the start here. And you mentioned this last night. I was watching the episode last night with Dalton. And it, it's very true. It seems like that 2020 year woke mm -hmm. people up, especially with COVID. Similar to me, I, I had been following the, the Lord well prior to that. I was grew up Catholic, um, went to Catholic school. And in that time, I was you know disciplined to go to church and and do the things of the Lord, but I truly didn't have the relationship. And right. as we know, as you walk closer, having some sacrifices as, as we go along the way, being obedient to the Lord, you draw closer, he reveals more to you. You you move a little bit closer road, draw near to him and he'll draw near to us. And so it was really this last four and a half years that was very telling for me. And he's revealed to me, I mean, one of the great purposes and callings I have is the safe, as a safe haven. And I've been involved in this for about seven years or so. And, but it's very hard for people, I think, to conceptualize oftentimes what that means. You know, what does that mean? So the Lord has revealed a lot of that to us. And, it, and I was telling Watchful a little bit prior to, I know that you've had other guests on as well, but what the Lord has shown me and, and spoken to me about though, is they are gonna be protected. Now, I'm not saying that anything, I wanna make sure this is clear too. Just because you're not in a safe haven does not mean you're protected. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just speaking to safe havens in general, what he showed me, because that was my calling. And now put your head around this a little bit. Safe havens are actually an extension, not just here in America, but elsewhere of Israel, right? Of the covenant agreement going back to Abraham, right? When Abraham was, was speaking to the Lord, the Lord gave him that land, right? And mm -hmm. from that, then it, that transferred to Moses. And then in Joshua, if you're actually looking at Joshua 1, I think this is very telling for people. Your territory will extend from the desert of Lebanon to the great river Euphrates and so forth. And he's, I'm sorry, in verse 3, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Right. And, and one of the things that I think is pretty cool about what I had, in, had taken on is, the gentleman that was leading this community, he passed from COVID. The Lord showed him prior to his passing, which he communicated uh, through his wife to me, he was given a vision of Moses. So his passing then, you know, passes the gauntlet, the baton to me, who would that be then be? Very prophetic in being that it was myself, because we had some things we had to do to actually gain control of the land. So that covenant agreement the Lord had spoken to me a couple months ago is, you're living it out today. So anyone that's in either a safe haven, even a home, whereby you're consecrating it, 
sanctifying it to the Lord to do his will and his purpose in this time to provide, protect, and preserve his people, you're part of that. That's how I see it. And the Holy Spirit's coming over as they say that. So it's crucial, though, that we understand that these covenant agreements extend all the way back, right? And being that we're grafted in, we have that promise, kingdom purpose, kingdom promise. And I mean, that's one of the things that as I was going through this, it, it didn't really become, uh, it didn't really get revealed to me until as of late. That it was actually that great of a gift. So going back to the land, the Lord had told me, right, you're going to need to start warring in the spirit like never before. No time. It doesn't matter what time of day it is. If I call on you, I need you to answer. Right. There's a heavy calling on those of us, not just in safe havens, those in the end times that are part of the Lord's army. But he's been speaking to me more and more very recently and over the, I'd say over the last year. I mean, he calls us valiant warriors. That's what he had told me. And he wants his church to rise up. And, I, and here's what I want everyone to understand here. It's not just standing. I know scripturally says stand. What he's told me is that was a defensive posture. It's time to take back territory from the enemy and claim the land just like Joshua did. That's what we're called to do in this time. Well, um, Joe, you want to <clears throat> introduce yourself to the audience? I, I know we, I may have skipped that. But I think uh, everybody would like to hear um, who you are. And, you know, I think folks understand that you are an associate of Dalton's. But um, I'd like to give you the floor and just uh, allow you to explain who you are and you kind of said a good bit of it, but I just wanted to give you that opportunity to formally do it. No, I appreciate it, Chris. And what I, what I would just want to thank you guys for actually allowing me to be on the show and, and just speak what the Lord is actually going to be speaking through me today. Um, I started out, as I said, in, in a Catholic household. I had very good parents that actually raised me well. Um, I went through a, They went through a divorce, as I did then. Um, and so there was, there was some hurt there. But I, I worked through it, and it was actually during Promise Keepers when I was 23. I don't know if you guys have ever been to it or you remember that they don't do it anymore. But I was at a, a I Promise Keepers. They, they would call a bunch of um, different stadiums, essentially, and a bunch of Christians would get together. They have keynote speakers that would come, and they'd have altar calls. So I was in Soldier Field in Chicago. I'm actually from that area. And I, I went to the altar. So that's when I accepted Christ. But then I was more so in a, a big mega church, which is much more lukewarm. And I broke away from that probably about six years ago. And I said, you know, listening to prophetic voices, and I believe in the end times, you have to be a student of prophecy. That, that's what the Lord has led me to. I'm not a prophet. So let me clarify. I am not in the office of prophet. But you have to be able to clearly discern the voice of the Lord and prophetically he's speaking through people in this end times. Um, he's pouring out a spirit as we speak and it will continue to continue to do so greater and greater. And I think that's where the great glory is going to come and the great harvest will come very, very shortly here. And in saying all that, that's kind of where my heart was, was really drawing closer to the Lord here in this, really this last three and a half to four years. So six years, I, I, I mean, I walked it my whole life since I was 23 with the Lord, but again, in a lukewarm way. No one ever taught me about spiritual warfare. My churches didn't teach me about fasting and praying, which is a, a huge revelation to me, which had opened the revelatory doors for me to go higher in him. And that's when he really started laying on my heart the persecution that was coming and why these, these safe havens are so critical to the body. And, and I know that we talk, many people hear about safe havens. And, and I'll just say this, that's what the Lord has called me to. So I'll speak about that. And we can talk about end times of where we're at. I do not believe in a, in a pre-trib rapture. I love my brothers and sisters that may. It's just not, I, I interpret the scripture, tribulation at the end of the day as being, we have to go through tribulation. Right. So I believe it's, it's upon us. And, and if I may speak a little bit to... Um, the eclipse after I after I get off this because I know we talked about it a little bit yesterday and you guys have been leading up to that. Sure. But let me finish out my my intro here. So with, with that all being said, I have four kids. I have actually five. There's 
two children from Ethiopia, one that lives in Ethiopia, one that, that lives here in America, uh, three biological kids that I'm married. And what's interesting is when, when I met my, my wife um, a few years ago, though, uh, she didn't believe we're in the end times. And the first time we met, I told her, hey, I have to share with you that I'm part of a, an end times ministry. Not usually an easy conversation. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, what? <laughs> so, so, I said, so I'd be disclosing to her a little bit, you know, what I'm about, right? About two and a half, three months in, she's like, I said, let's, let's fast and pray. So the first time I had ever done it. So we just skipped, we skipped breakfast. That, e that evening she had, she had gone to bed. The next day I see her and, and she told me, she goes, well, an angel visited. And, like, and, and what, what did he say? Now she didn't see him visibly. She's very clear to say that, but I heard an audible voice and he said, Joel. And she said, Joel, what? She said, Joel, too. So if you, those I think in your audience probably understand what's in, what's in Joel, too. But if you, if you look at Joel, too, right? Let all who live in the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness, like dawn spreading across the mountains. And I'll, I'll stop there. But it resonated in her heart. She's like, oh, she said this to me. She goes, he's right. That's the only other time she said that, but that's, but, <laughs> wow. uh, but she, yeah, so she, it was very powerful from that standpoint that she also was a believer too. And she was, she was walking very obediently, but she had not necessarily, the door hadn't been open for her to see really what the end times was yet hmm. calling her to. And so that, that had been a, a big part of our relationship, which is very difficult to explain to most people. <laughs> so, oh but, Yeah. But, but, um, so anyway, that, that had kind of been my walk and then through the, the safe haven, um, community here. And then I know I, I've worked with Dalton a little bit and working a bit more with him as, as he goes to set his up as well. But I've been called what the Lord has laid on my heart. And I talked to Dalton about this after I saw him on the NDE, which is I will help in any way possible to help provide for God's people. And that's just through advisement, through guidance. Potentially it could be monetary means if I have that available. But I really, my heart is in it to save God's people and to bring home the harvest. It's not yeah. just saving us. And, and I'm going to say it's I fantastic. was wrong. I was wrong because I used to think, all right, I'm going to get to that safe haven. I'm going to be safe. Not really thinking about my fellow brothers and sisters. So I had to repent about that. And the Lord has really opened my eyes over this last few years. Like, no, you're not just leading a community. You do everything. So here's the next word of knowledge the Lord gave me. Um, he gave me two words. I'll share these two. He gave me underground and network. Now, I want you to, to really think about that in the audience to think about that. Well, what does that mean? Take yourself back to um, Acts chapter 4 when everybody sold their goods right they committed mm -hmm. into the community they built the community that's the the intents of the safe haven right and they lived together now as you actually move forward right in the first century church great persecution came we are this is a type and shadow of exactly what we're going to see in front of us right now and i believe it's it's coming in the next few months and i'll explain to you guys why i believe that to be the the time clock that i'm looking at so it's going to be incumbent upon us believers, those in safe havens, those in, in places of safety or homes that are in strategic location. That's another thing that the Lord told me, placement and strategic. We have to be very clear about what our purpose is here on this earth in this, these last hours. Right. And, and we have to be willing to reach out to our fellow brothers and sisters, believers and non-believers alike, because we have to show that light. We are the light and the hope that when there's going to be absolute darkness we will be the light and so it's so important that we understand that what the lord has shown me in this persecution is the development and building of networks that have this understanding is critical to the mission that jesus has for us not just for me yes. for every single person that's listening right now hmm. yes yeah um 
Dalton and I talked for an hour after the show last night, and it felt um, so natural uh, that it, it seemed like it was a missing piece of the puzzle as his community now networking with our community and my focus has been as of the last 30 days is to network as many of mm -hmm. these like-minded individuals and their community buildings to our communities so that uh, we're all essentially one. Mm -hmm. And um, especially where he is located, he's, and I'm not sure, are you in the same area as him, the southeast Tennessee? No, no I'm Mark, Mark Twain National Forest area within Missouri. Oh, mm. got it. Okay. Um, and, but, and but, see, we, we, but we need the network and pockets across, right? Right. So I, I right. know you and Dalton, based on the conversation last night, you guys are in pretty close proximity. Yeah. But th there's going to be a need across, right? We oh, may need for to sure. Help our, our fellow, like, I know a couple people in this area as well that, that have safe havens or have started some. But what the, I think the Lord is keeping them hidden right now, and I think there's a reason for that. Yeah. But those of us, though, that should be in the network should be sharing with each other so that we know because we're going to be sending people to and from. The Lord spoke to me a couple months ago and he said, you're going to need to be saving people in unconventional ways. There are going to be missions. I'm paraphrasing. I'm not going to read my journal exact, but you're going to need to save people. And some of you are going to be on extremely dangerous missions. Right. Many are called to you are chosen. We have to be willing to lay our life down for our brothers. That's what the Lord has been telling me as well, that yeah. your, your life is not your own in this time. That's right. You have to be able to let go. <clears throat> and that's what the Lord told me seven years ago. It's like, you need to start fleeing Babylon and get yourself ready. Yeah. And, it's, and, and that's yeah. where I think our hearts have to be. And I know it's not easy. I have conversations with people about this, but we have to be they, taking those steps of obedience, here's how I see it. If you don't do it, the Lord's going to do it for you, and it's going to be much more painful. Yes. <laughs> way that I see Tribulation has a way of doing that. Yeah. No, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. And one thing I was explaining to Dalton, and he had not considered this yet, and I'm glad he was receptive to it, is when the networks go down, communication will be a key element communication will be a key element if you're not able to communicate it's going to you'll be operating in the dark so since he's so close to me uh, I, I'm going to be going up there and setting up a, a ham radio station at his place and if you have the means as well I can walk you through what you need because with these uh, these station setups it's, it's global communications with no grid required. Um, and this is old-fashioned technology that they used in World War II. So there is no distance limitations if it's set up correctly. Yeah. So no, uh, if, I, I'd, be, I'd be happy to. Um, I, I mean, there are a couple people here, I think, went to get their ham radio license. So we're on board. There's a number of people what's interesting is, is the territory at least that i'm in there are and i think watchful was saying this a little bit earlier is there are like we use the term like-minded but when we say that it's they're part of the unified body of christ in one mind and one accord that's how how i describe it right who worship in spirit and truth that i'll say it that way uh, but we have a community actually a territory if you will beyond our community that extends out and there's many small churches as well that that understand what time we're in as well. And so, I mean, the Lord has placed me here for that particular reason with those particular assets, if you will, on, on my perimeter. But it's going to be critical. Like, I, I know the I won't call out the, the, the town, but I know the local militia next door to us. If they come through they're they're going to be someone to reckon with, for example. But mm -hmm. it's you have to be, as you know, community is going to expand out, right? And we're going to have to come together as, as fellow believers and Americans too. 
um, and help save those individuals, protect those, provide for those that just aren't able to do that at this point. But it's critical, I think, Chris, and while you guys all know this, and probably your, I'm sure your audience does as well, though, that network is got to be local, kind of regional, and then possibly national, depending on what you're being asked to do. Right. And, and one of the yeah. things that, go ahead. No, no, I'm listening. Is that one of the things that, that I found interesting is seven years ago, I planted myself here. But about two years ago, the Amish came here. And so I always look at, too, a lot of the areas that we find some of these safe haven locations, you tend to see Mennonites or, or Amish as well, which is a good indicator because, right, you're going to need to barter and trade. You're going to probably be able to learn some skills, I'm sure, from them. I know I will be. And here, here's yeah, something right. interesting. I was, I was talking to uh, my pastor the other day, and I don't know if you guys have thought about this, but for the listeners to think about as well, is if you have Amish near you, what would you barter with them? Right, because you think they have everything, right? But there's actually a couple things that they actually go to the store in town. They cleaning supplies, welding equipment, and welding supplies. So, two potential items you might want to stock up on there. Yeah. Okay. No, you're, hey, you're, you're you, absolutely right. We, we've been we've been talking about safe havens. Can you kind of give us a definition of what it is that you mean by safe haven? What are some of these? What are some of the attributes of a safe haven? Well, I mean, it, it, if you look at it scripturally, right, I mean, there, there's a land base, essentially, that you can sustain your own community. I mean, I look at it as a city in a small, smaller scale, right? You need to have security. You need to have the ability for food. You need to have the ability to barter and trade. More than anything, though, what the Lord has shown me is that water is your number one. And, and that's not a secret. Mm -hmm. But do you have multiple, and I say multiple ways to get water, to preserve the water, to clean the water. And, and here's the thing that I think is going to be interesting in the days to come from what the Lord showed me in dreams. With a lot of these geological changes that are going to happen in the earth, I think there's going to be the safe havens in certain areas of refuge are going to have a plethora of water. And I think that's going to be one of the main uh, commodity trading items is going to be water. So mm -hmm. when, I, when I look at that, I mean, does, does your land, is it fertile? Can, you know, is it large enough you can actually sustain um, animals? I'm going with a small animal model. I am not going large. People may have, a, may have more land. It depends how much land you have and the ability to care for it, right? Everything's always in the maintenance. That requires so much, so much work. But the safe haven should be a, a safe place of safety. Now, the, the, I don't know if anyone here, is, I'm sure, has listened to Henry Groover. Henry Groover was a, a mainstream uh, prophet. He, along with Dimitri Dudeman, are kind of the two big names, John Paul Jackson, probably the top three that I listen to. Henry Groover, if you listen to any of his um, prophecies or visions that the Lord showed him, specifically, he was shown safe havens with a an invisible protection around them as the invading Russians and Chinese came into our land. And so that, that was, and that was some years back. Um, but that's something just for people to know that the reason that I wanted to speak a little bit about this today, and I'm happy to go into anything else we want to, is just, I think they're misunderstood oftentimes, but it is its own ministry and it is a heavy mantle to, to do such a thing because you're basically setting up a city in and of itself, and making sure that your community operates with the, the tenets of, uh, of Christ. And one of the things that I, I, I grew up in the corporate world, I grew up in leadership, um, in the medical device industry, actually. And the Lord had blessed me with the opportunity to learn a lot of leadership. And one of the things that I would challenge your listeners to do, there's a book, it's an easy read, it's called Lead Like Christ, Lead Like Jesus. And the reason I tell you that is, without even knowing that they wrote this book some time ago, is the pinnacle or the center is obviously Christ and, and the Lord at the center, knowing who you are in him. From that, everything emanates out. And then you, you need to be able to self-examine yourself and understand that who you are in Christ. And from that, that builds a community of like-minded mm -hmm. believers that lead just like Jesus and think like Jesus. 
you can't just it, in I'll, I'll say this too and this is just my experience speaking as well as is backed up by by the bible here we have to not have a spirit of offense as we go forward you know when we're in the world we oftentimes like we can go home and we can move, get away from these things if you're in community and and you're going through high stress environments as yeah. and, and i and i was not in the military i'm going to say that okay i've had crisis and stress in a corporate perspective but i have not been in the military so i'm not going to speak to that and and thank god for the veterans who who did all these things for us my my father was in vietnam and fought front lines and i know others as well so god bless them who, who've done that and i res greatly respect what they've done but when i so when i say that we will be in such stress and crisis that we are going to have to be able to uh, come to our brothers and sisters right and empathize in the way that they are feeling at that time the lord has put yeah. in my heart to receive in a lot of orphans and widows we're going to see a lot of that i mean that's that's one thing too chris i don't know if you're doing this or others just just a, a mental note like i'm creating an area of respite so that people actually have a time you kind of, time to kind of rest and relax and find some peace because with all of this stuff happening, calamity after calamity, it's going to be really hard to find that peace. And we need to be able to provide some of that as well. So the Lord laid that on my heart kind of as my last project here as we, we move forward. So it sounds like you're saying that a safe haven is so I think it's a no brainer that like if you're out in the country, uh, you have land that's capable of sustaining yourself, your family and others. Um, the, a safe haven is kind of a community that I think that's kind of a given. Well, what about people that are in a city? Um, can you, can you have a safe haven in a city or what is your recommendation for them? Yeah, I, I think you can. I, I mean, I, I can use my parents, my family as well. I mean, they, they understand the, the end times are coming and they're, I wouldn't say they're in the city, they're in the suburbs, but they're in the, the suburbs of a, a very large city. So they're not really that far from much. Here's how I look at it. Not everybody is called a safe haven. There, there's a woman that has gotten a lot of prophetic messages and a lot of the words of knowledge and things that she's been told, I've been told as well. So it, it's confirmation for me. And, and one of the things that she spoke about on April 6th was that safe havens are activated. She has a web page, and I can send it to you guys later if, if your viewers want to actually look at it. It's very um, in-depth. Not everyone's called. I do believe that people in cities, people in suburbs are called to be there because the Lord has a mission for you as well. And so if you, again, are sanctifying your home and following, right, the, the tenets of what Christ would be asking for in these last days, I believe that that can be a safe haven as well. I, I think the Lord has everyone positioned properly because the Lord, you right, his high, high ways are higher than our ways. And so I do believe, yes, you could be in a city. Now, if I'm going to be honest, though, I don't know how much longer. At some point, all of us are going to be flushed, I believe, flushed out, even those in safe havens when persecution comes. And the Lord has a plan for that. And I'm not going to get into that right now. But right. So, yes, I believe that you can still be and create your own safe haven in your home. And I think you can also be hidden in that way. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. The, the, the thing that. I've been told um, by several very prophetic people is that these safe havens, they're going to have warring angels protecting them. Mm -hmm. And it, it's an important that people are gathered together in faith and numbers. The ones, if from what I understand, the ones that try to isolate on their own, the odds are greatly diminished. Uh, that Correct. was just what I was told. Now, a, a couple of folks in the audience uh, had asked questions on the radio stuff. Guys, everything um, is on our social platform. There's a ham radio section. I have all the tutorial videos, all the gear you needed. For cheaper options, I'm going to find some used older radios on eBay that will work as well, and I'll link them there. Because it doesn't matter if it's new or used. It, it all does the same thing. The newer ones have some fancy, you know, options, but it's really just irrelevant. It, the only important factor is that 
you have a proper what's called high frequency ham radio not like a Beofang that is a line of sight two-way that has a three mile range you need a proper high frequency radio that goes up and deflects off the ionosphere and comes back down in another part of the world this gives you global comms you just have to understand how it works because different p times of the day give you different target locations as the ionosphere goes up and down through the day and the evening just like a game of pool it's going to deflect and bank down so if the ionosphere is pulled back in the evening you have a longer shot with a longer deflection so right now during the daytime i'm able to contact everybody on the east coast and tennessee and right to about the mississippi line but in the evening, I cannot communicate with my dad in Tennessee or anyone on the East Coast. The deflection point is now Midwest, California, Europe, London, Asia. So the time of the day has everything to do with it. And I know this sounds complicated, but I promise you it's not. This is technology they've been using for 60, 70 years. And it's actually really simple. You just have to understand how it works. It's not line of sight radio like these handhelds that people use for cb and ham comms it has to be high frequency and it's just a style of a radio and, and it's real easy yeah. uh i, I have, have tutorials to on there they don't have to What's be that? as big as the ones as christopher's got in the back no the one no I showed no you is, is a high frequency one that, 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 that i mean you can put them in your car this one yeah. i have here is portable with a little battery that's like that big true so, it, it, we got the, into this for like 350 on a sale yeah, so the key to this is the antenna. Um, the radio itself, as long as it's connected to a proper antenna, you're set. Now, these antennas you can get for $100. They're wire antennas that string up from uh, high points. You can put one, you connect it to a tree, and then it runs about 100 feet and connects to another tree. And this gives you global communications. Um, but I won't go into any more detail because I don't want to burn up time talking about something that you guys can learn about on the social platform because I've got a ton of information there. So guys, just go there. It will be in It will be critical that you are able to communicate because if maybe, you're in the dark, maybe we can even maybe we can even do some tutorials and like shows just on ham radio. We'll uh, do do some planning like oh, the, sure. the main types, handheld, yeah. high frequency. Um, yeah, we'll prepare for that. We'll do we'll do some shows and then put them under a playlist so you guys. <laughs> so I'm listening to Kentucky right now. Cool. Uh, but while we yeah. while we have Joe here, why don't we um, get back into uh, safe yes. havens? Uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of curious. Uh, uh, is there a difference between safe havens and like somebody that's a prepper? I would say yes, and my view is that there there are prep there's Christian preppers, so there may not be as much of a delineation. I do know that there are prepper communities. I know in in my area there are. Um, mm -hmm. the, the difference being, and I know some people that have have looked into getting into prepper communities, and usually the ticket in there is usually can you pay? Uh, right now, I'm not saying that there isn't necessarily a need to to provide some level of monetary assistance to where you're going to go. But the, the, what the Lord has shown me and listen to different prophetic voices. And I mentioned this earlier, you need to have the Lord protecting you. I don't know personally, the Lord hasn't said this to me, but from connecting the dots, you really need to have the Lord's hand of protection to really see you through this rough, this rough time. I think you can get through it to some degree. But I think there's going to be so many things coming at us at such a high severity that you won't get through it without the Lord. That, that's how I see yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, it's not called the Great Tribulation that has never been anything like on this planet and will never be anything like it again. It's not called that for a reason, <laughs> for no reason yeah. at all. Uh, well, so I it mean, definitely seems like it'll be a time of persecution, that's for sure. I mean, six, seven years ago, I... I this is before I started journaling, but I still remember vividly one of the, the prophetic dreams the Lord gave me. This is when I first started getting into the, the safe haven. And it was of extreme persecution. So a lot of these movies, right, have depicted, I think, what the, what the Lord has actually showed me and others. 
kind of like the Hunger Games, right? And you, you see all the, the cities just dilapidated and just destroyed, right? And I've been running, I'm running normally by myself away from evil. And I had one actually about six months ago, similarly as well. And so I, I do, I know that persecution is going to be, it's going to be tough, right? And if we're speaking and spreading the gospel of Jesus, just like in the, the first church, they're coming for us. And so this is why it's so important, and the Lord's been saying, put your armor on, armor up every day. You know, Christ is our commander-in-chief. Let's keep in mind, yes, he is, a, he is a God of love, but he is also a mighty warrior, the greatest mm -hmm. warrior of all. And so we are in his army, and we have to understand how to fight in that. So, and, and I'm bringing this kind of full circle to what Chris was saying about warring angels overseeing the safe haven. And I think Warren Angels can also oversee, like you said, uh, watchful in the, the cities too, right? I was praying, I was praying with one with Dalton, and we were talking about this exact thing. And one of the things that, that the Lord brought to us was that you have to have a level of purity and sanctification. And this is what Chris was talking about, right? Corporately. Right. Everybody's again. This is why I keep talking about unity, being one body and, and one mind and one accord. The, the Lord speaks about that. Right. We, we really need to be working on it. Ephesians, I think, four, four. And, and when we do that, here's the here's the wording that the Lord had given. Impeccable protection. But in order for that to happen, in order for the, the angels like with, with Jacob to ascend and descend, we have to be pure in all of our motives and doing the obedient things that the Lord is asking of us. So, yes, I, I think, you know, the, the veil's getting thinner and thinner before we're going to start seeing some of the, the spirit realm. And, and I truly believe, though, that those of us that are in the body of Christ, Christ has, our, has us protected, but we also have to know how to grab hold of those particular scriptures that we can use in spiritual warfare to to help aid our cause. I'll share this, and I'm not saying I, I know this as a fact, but I've read a number of prophetic voices over the year that were shown people in safe havens that military men when we were invaded were coming to the safe havens to actually have prayer because when they were prayed for, they won their battles. Well, what would that be? It's the spiritual element of it actually coming to play for them to win those battles, those small battles. So I do know the Lord's going to move his hand for his, his people, the ones that are really sold out to him. And so th there's a big calling for the safe havens. Again, it's not just to stay there. Like there's people that are going to be called to do, to be warned in the spirit 24 seven. Right. I, I, th I really believe that with the, the tribulation that that's coming it's going to get quite bad we're going to have everything you know we're going to have geological disasters we're going to have pestilence running we're going to have civil civil wars we're going to have invasion but you think about all of that stuff happening yeah. i mean how can you possibly survive on your own if you're not in the lord so that's what he has shown me yeah so that that kind of goes back to your answer about the prepper communities too yeah. yeah. So, um, do you have an idea um, on just a ballpark timeline? I know a few of the folks in the audience, and um, and it may line up with mine. I'm I'm leaning towards you know this fall towards the end of this year before yeah. things start really, really, really um, dropping the hammer on. I'm thinking um, this fall will be the the reveal of the Antichrist and the mark of the beast it rolled out next winter, that type of uh, timeline. Yes, very similar. I, I, let me share what I mentioned earlier about the, uh, the eclipse, and then I'll, I'll start there and then move, move forward. So the Lord spoke to me a couple months ago about this, this eclipse, and what he had spoken to me wasn't specific. He just said that this eclipse is a harbinger of judgment that's going to come right, right after. And when I say that, I don't know if any of you, any of you have listened to JW TV. I'm only bringing that up because um, it was something that someone had sent to me, and he's he's pretty detailed in his his research. He stated something that then was verified, and I always look to the prophetic people that I followed for some time and have confirmed their um, 
their, their words. And what he had said and what was confirmed by two others was that during, and I think we were speaking about this, I'm going to watch my language. During the eclipse, right, there were planes that were flying overhead. If anyone's aware that the C-130s were outfitted for sprayers back mm -hmm. last year, and I, or I'm sorry, last month. So I think it was March 23rd or so, they did some tests, some test sprays, if you will, and they were successful in it. So take that as you may. Um, there have then prophetically been a couple of people that have then been told during that particular eclipse, it was one of the reasons people were actually warned not to be outside from a, that's, those that have... That's what we've been telling folks. We, you, it's, it's just awesome to see all the messages just line up so well. And so continue, I don't know... Continue. So, so in that, if that be the case, 7 to 15 days is an incubation period. Right. After about 15 to 30 days, the media will start catching wind of it. But we know that our... Our, our media isn't necessarily going to say anything to us. And then by, you know, 30 to 45 days, you might start seeing more come out in the media and people starting to possibly die or, or get sick. And so by we're looking at the end of June for another pestilence potentially to, to really be seen and or spoken about. I think that then kicks off many other things. And to your point, I don't believe that there's going to be an election. I think yeah. there's going to be many calamities that once this thing, this domino falls, it hits many others. I think but let's sure. let's look at Israel. Let's look at Israel and Palestine right now. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you guys were speaking about this a little bit. I'm following that as well, man. And yeah. for those of that have been following this, right? Once they split the land of Israel, they split us. And Dalton was speaking last night about the, you know, when he was given a scroll to swallow and he's show the new Madrid just split and yeah. you know the east and west coast so I do believe some of that I don't know if all of it but I do believe some of that's going to hit this year then you have the dollar collapse and it, hyperinflation and all that so I think from now more probably June end of June maybe July through the end of the year I, I think we're going to be in for a ride so here's the thing is they have to, hands down, stop the voting process yep. for what's going to happen this November. It yep. is critical for their narrative and their plan. If, if that actually happens, it's, it totally derails their narrative. So Correct. it is absolutely fundamental that that does not happen. And they are going to prevent that at all costs. At all costs. Mm -hmm. At all costs. They're going to, that will not happen. If it does happen, it's by the grace of the Lord. But I agree with you. They I, are I, going I, to try everything to prevent that. I, and. You guys may be familiar, I'm sure many of your viewers are, Dana Coverstone, some of his first uh, dreams that he had, I, I know I, I thought, okay, that's coming that particular year, I think it was 2020 when he had him, or 2021, but I, it actually looks like it's probably going to be, if you kind of overlay the other, the other items that we know about, it seems to be this year that we may start seeing that. And so I do believe by October, something massive has to happen and i don't know if you guys saw um they were showing the calendar the russian calendar for this year this was uh, a few months back and that mm -hmm. russian calendar actually shows invasion i think it was on the jefferson memorial it may be wrong but it was somewhere in dc where the russians were invading and it was october of this year hmm. i'm just i'm not yeah, saying I mean, that i agree with them, that. but i do believe there's some of that that could be could come to pass. I think it's more so we'd see maybe some UN troops here is what I'm thinking. Well, they're already here. Yeah. Yes, they are. Those are, unveiled. yes, these uh, folks that are tr traveling to us, they are operating on that administration's funding source. And they're being brought in that way. They're being brought in on special aircraft. 
and provided bank cards, cell phones. It's highly coordinated. I've, I've seen and had friends that have interviewed some of these uh, folks that have come in that are in the inner cities just waiting for instructions. And they're not quiet about it. They'll talk about it. All you got to do is ask them. Yep. They, they will literally say it. And to on what you said uh, just a few minutes ago about the eclipse and the spraying, after I had dug a little digging, I also pulled the flight paths on Skywatch and was able to verify everything that was going around. Yep. Um, I, I looked at all the planes and their flight paths that were very abnormal for what they were doing. And uh, what BP Earthwatch was reporting was it was accurate. Now, we will find out in the next 5 to 15 days because yeah. it, there, it, it will either be or it is or it won't. But yep. the yep. medical establishments will start to fill. And that will be the cue. Did you see uh, BP Earthwatch's video last night? He said that people yeah. are already reporting, already reporting. throats and itchy eyes. Yeah. Oh, really? Now, the thing is this, is that the mind can be a very powerful thing. Yes. If you yes. are paranoid about things, your mind will literally make those symptoms happen. So uh, out of fear, folks can just through hypochondriac thoughts, that stuff can happen. Now, when people well, start falling over, that's a whole different... Too. So th those, yeah. are, those are allergy symptoms, too. So it could just be people mistaking those you know have, maybe they went outside longer than they normally do maybe they were in the grass so there's always that possibility the time the like time, you said the time the next the next two weeks will be really revealing which it's interesting that we're coming up on passover so oh, that and, is. knowing the implications of passover um, protecting us from the angel of death so that is really yeah. interesting that you say that because the timing is immaculate for that Mm -hmm. Well, you've got that, and then, and then I, I think we were talking about what's going on right in Israel as well right now. Is you have that they're trying to broker this peace deal, right? But they don't have these forty hostages now, from what I understand, that they were asked to identify. So I mean, you've got Iran now that's that's ready to strike Israel. And that I was reading today now, right? Uh, the U.S. had backed off of protecting Israel. Now they're saying that they would go after Iran. So if we did an about face, it sounds like as well, but. All of this leading into Passover. So you do wonder with all of this on a, on a holy feast day, what in fact is going to happen? Yeah. Well, the U.S. did abstain from the Security Council meeting um, just a few days ago, actually a week ago. It was the first time they had ever not voted in favor for the Holy Land um, I really try hard to not say any of those countries by name. I, our our show gets flagged almost every night now. Um, almost okay. every show now has been, it's not your fault. I should have done a better job at prepping. But uh, the keywords are like the, the country names, any of the yeah. administration's names, anything to do with the, that sickness. So uh, I try to be pretty vague with my words, but hopefully people pick up on it. But those are just flag words, and it is what it is. But um, so they uh, abstained from the votes for the first time in history. They had always voted in support of the Holy Land. So that's a telltale sign. Uh, did you say that they are supporting um, um, attacking the adversary yes. country to its north yes hmm that, that that's what was i had read earlier this this evening actually that's why I th it, it was a bit of it was interesting to me because it was kind of an about face based on this, yeah. the u.n vote and what you mentioned they were kind of taking a step back but now it sounds like they're hmm. taking more of an offensive footing but you know how the things change do we know that that data was actually correct <laughs> yeah i don't know right yeah I mean, yeah, it's. I really try to read between the lines on what is released to the the mainstream press, because whatever is let out is let out intentionally, to Correct. support their to support their narrative. So I I really try to read between the lines. Um. So, you know, it's 
really all you can do is wait and watch. Correct. Uh, well, I mean, I know we're, we're mostly considered conspiracy theorists, and I get it until it becomes fact. And I think most of the time since, since at least COVID, we've seen some of, the, uh, some of those facts, you know, reveal themselves. But we'll see in time, like you say. I mean, we don't know exactly, but I think if you are a, a follower, again, of the, the prophetic and you, can, you have prophetic voices that really have confirmed over time that they, they truly are hearing the Lord, that's mm -hmm. kind of what actually I rely on more so for my news, but I, I don't just take it at face value, right? One of the things I think is important to note, too, is if you look at all of the gifts that, that we can receive from the Holy Spirit, which is the one in the end days that's probably the most important, it's discernment, in, in my opinion. Mm. Absolutely. Um, because if you don't have that, I mean, and I say that because of, Right, deception is going to be at an all-time high, and we see it already, but imagine it getting even worse, right? Oh, I mean, you've got these AI fakes now that are out there. I mean, is that real or is it not real? Oh, yeah. I mean, do you really oh, have yeah. to hear from the Holy Spirit? We really have to be obedient to Him and asking Him everything. Absolutely. I don't know if listeners have heard this either, but... Really, I, I would suggest also that you don't go to any big gatherings unless you ask the Holy Spirit and you get confirmation from Him. I agree. Yeah. Speaking I, of I discernment, agree. what do you what do you say to the people who maybe aren't in a safe haven that um, are looking for one, or maybe even want to start one? Uh, like, who would you recommend that they seek out to be a part of their safe haven? What type of Christians? I know because there's there are different organizations that are better at preparing i'm thinking of you know mormons are are some probably some of the most prepared uh in that correct. they i mean they have got uh, they've been talking about the end time for a long time and they have they literally have you know stores selling um supplies um yeah. good good fit i mean uh, you spoke about the spirit of offense which i th which i think is monumental at understanding like you know the the seven churches listed in the book of revelation uh i think are are very important uh that they're in the book of revelation because it's like you need to realize that that all seven of those churches look at yeshua as their lord uh, but mm -hmm. they get some things wrong you know they have some right. things to repent from granted there's a couple that you know are ideal examples uh but what's so what is your advice for somebody looking uh, to start or find a safe haven? I think that the start a safe haven, I mean, if I'm just going to be honest, I think it's a bit too late to start one. Now, if you're going to start a safe haven in terms of, you know, your own home or maybe your community or neighborhood that you already have access to the land, that's a different story. I think you can mm -hmm. then set up shop, uh, go uh, interface network with if you have Amish near you. But I think Mormon has, they have great stores. I, I know they do. It's a great mm -hmm. way to, to prep. Um, but I would also say be careful to not let the physical preparation get ahead of your spiritual preparation. Definitely make Hands sure down. your spiritual preparation is number one, two behind Absolutely. that water and then food, and then obviously things to def defend your assets is gonna be, be key. I think, I mean, you heard what I believe my timeline is, and that's why I'm giving that recommendation. I don't think sure. it's too late to do something though. Um, right. So, so that's point one. Point two is if you're looking to get to a safe haven, I, I'm going to say that be very, very discerning about the safe havens you search out. I'm not going to mention anything here. I'm happy to talk to somebody to, to give them some direction. Um, like our, our safe haven's full pretty much at this point because we've been around for seven years. We, we are not building anything uh, further at this point. Um, there may be one opportunity if, if someone was interested in, in the area that I'm in. But you really have to vet the people, and, and it's, sometimes it's very hard. I would say this, too. I think this is very, very critical of all the things. Is, and I, you've heard me say this as a recurring theme. Make sure the Holy Spirit leads you there. Yes. Do not go in fear. I, I've had, and I'm just going to say this, we've had some, a couple people here over the years. Now I've, I've got a longer span here to work with that came out of absolute fear and i wasn't discerning enough to really get that they're not here anymore but mm -hmm. fear drives right their emotions and we're not thinking straight and then we're in a situation like well, well did i really need to do that so Hands make, down. 
make sure not everyone's called to a safe haven please pray on that if so I, i'm happy to, i know if i know a couple i i don't have a huge network but um we do know i mean dalton was on last night i and the only reason I bring him up is he's a friend of mine, and I know he's starting it with pure intention, and he's following um, biblical uh, the biblical scripture, right, when we're looking at, at Acts 4. And so I do believe that that's one place to start. I know he's, he's looking at that. Um, I don't know of too many others. I know another person that I can put someone in contact with, and you can network. But I, I do think the hour is very late. To be mm. for doing that you you have a few months yet yeah, now is the time now is the time i think uh joe what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a group on our social platform uh i'm going to call it safe havens and with all the leaders in the community can start uh pouring information there um, our social platform we uh it's a, a members only setup so it's not something that just uh, anybody um, can come to. Now, anybody can come sign up, but w we try to vet uh, every member that comes. And we have several moderators, moderators that are constantly kind of watching what's going on, looking for flags for people that, that you know, or don't fit in with the body of Christ. Um, yeah. And we're up to about 800 active users now. So... Um, it's been it's been a lot of fun. Um, Dalton got set up on there yesterday, and um, each leader I'm creating them a section, a group section in there, sort of like what a Facebook page is. But you'll be able to add all the information you want, how people can reach you, and it's a uh, Watchful did a really good job building this. He's a coder and, and built a platform oh, nice. in a record amount of time. Um, it's it's just this is where we try to get ahead of the eight ball just because we know at some point they are going to ban our faith and you won't be able to talk about this online. People will be persecuted on the other social network sites and it, it will be also a way for them to track who you are. So yep. we've been gathering on our private platform that there's no outside owners or investors or sponsors that have anything to do uh, with the platform's operation. And um, so it's, it's been a real blessing and uh, I'll send you some information on it as well so that you can, uh, if you're interested, you can share information there as well. And you can also um, advise your community to gather there because being able to communicate as a whole as the whole body of Christ in a safe location yep. is key. And one thing, watch. I wanted to note as well, though, is you may not be called to come yet. I think that people are going to be called at certain times, right? You may mm. be positioned in a particular place, but it may be important for you to know where you may need to go in a particular point in time. But again, I, I think the, and I and I say this because one of the friends of mine who's prophetic as well. Um, she has said this as well, and the Lord has spoken this to her, and I know this as well because the Lord has spoken to me about some of this too. You will be shown supernaturally or told supernaturally where to go. Right. It, it, it seems odd that that would be the case, but the Lord will put things in your path so you will know. And so I don't think that the, the body right now of Christ has to panic. If you're in the Lord, he's got a mission for you where you're at. Now, maybe right. he's calling you out, but please just be clear, just know clearly from the Holy Spirit that, in fact, he's calling, calling you out to do hey, that. Hey, I, I have to help my daughter real quick. I'll be right back. I can hear you guys talking, though. Sure. Cool. <clears throat> so just, yeah, I, I just want I caution that because I've seen a lot of that. Um, and I think it's all with good intentions, and everyone wants to do what's best for themselves and for their family to protect. And I, I completely agree with all of that. Again, just make sure that you're in alignment with the Lord and you're in lockstep with him. And if, if that's what he's calling, then then go for it. So along those lines, I mean, we've been talking about these safe havens. We've been talking kind of about timeline of events. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about timeline of events. What do you see coming down the pipeline? What do you see the order of events being? 
based on what I've, I've seen, I think we do have a couple of pestilences coming. I think we may have one um, that may have started or is going to start this summer. I think a, a more serious one you can see probably at the end of this year. Um, I do think, again, I, I'm keeping my eye on, on Israel as we should, right? That's kind of the time clock that we have to watch. And I do see a lot of geological disasters uh, happening this year. And I do believe come mm. all earthquakes, essentially. I mean, we saw, obviously, prior to the eclipse, we saw that 4.8 earthquake in New Jersey slash New right. York. I mean, so earthquakes in diverse places. I mean, there, there's a right. start there. So I do think that, you know, and again, if we look at some of the, the history, right, back in the days of Jonah, right, after that eclipse, there were earthquakes that happened as well. So when I look at some of those things, I don't think that it's uh, too hard to see that, that that's certainly on the table. Civil War, certainly, they're going to want to start that before the election. We start talked about that. Mm. The Lord showed that to me a couple a uh, couple months ago. Um, and it was really the timing he showed me was after this winter. So it was kind of a general timing, but based on what my spirit had sensed, it was going to be sometime this year. I, the true. way I see it, it, they don't want that election. I agree with what Chris is saying. So I think that's going to come. Yeah, I, I don't know yeah. if it's going to all be in that order, but I do think you're going to, and then the financial collapse is going to come. That's why that, that, the gold dollar relationship, right? We start watching that. I think that it is barely hanging on and that is mm. about to fall apart. And I do think in the next couple of months, we're going to start seeing prices skyrocket. And if in fact there is a pestilence and right, you get the Baltic index that kind of seizes or stops and supply chains start seizing up again, like they did with, with uh, CV-19. I think you're you're looking for a pretty epic and, and dark uh, fall, but I want to make sure that this is clear too, is that just because there's darkness does not mean that the Lord is not going to move in his people. And I believe that's what he, he's setting us up for. So I just want to make sure it's, it's a warning, but the Lord warns us because he wants us to be prepared as his people. So we are the light to the world. So I, I see both flowing. I see some, obviously some serious judgments coming in tribulation. But I do see that at that same time, the Lord is going to move his hand over his people and we're going to be performing mighty works. So in a way, it, it could be scary, but at the same time, it's, it's exciting because I do believe those of us right now that are probably on this podcast, we're excited to be alive at this time because the Lord oh, yeah. wired in our DNA this very thing so that the Holy Spirit will move in us and just, you know, blow any type of um expectations out of the water yeah yeah it's interesting when when i was activated i like saying that now activated in 2019 2020 because i because i had a complete change of priorities and it and it kind of scared my wife because i was so excited when i realized Oh man, we are in the end time events. And it's just like everything I had learned for the last 40 years about the end time events were like, these are going to happen in my lifetime. This is the most amazing time to be alive. We're literally living during a time that was written about in the scripture. I mean, like when that revelation 12 sign happened and the rapture didn't happen, there was just kind of like this disappointment and you're kind of like, well, what happens next? Yeah. But when, <laughs> when the realization is, is like, oh, that was an anchor point to, to let us know, to like start looking at the timeline of events. It was just like the excitement of that realization. It was just like, this is an awesome time to be alive. Yeah. Uh, and, and like you said, it's not a time to be negative. It's not a time to, to, uh, you know, worry about, you know, the great tribulation and, uh, the, the evil, especially if you're not part of the evil. I mean, like this is the separation of the wheat and the tares, right? Uh, this is, this is our, we're so close to our redemption. What we have now is just a down payment, according to Ephesians. This is just yeah. a propitiation. You know, we have, we've just got that little down payment, but the, the full redemption is coming. And it's like, we could be within months or years of that full redemption. So this is the most exciting time to be alive. Um, so you, do you think that maybe the safe havens are um, what, what the scripture is referring to when it talks about 
the Philippians, or not Philippians, Philadelphia Church. The Philadelphia Church being uh, kept from the trials that are coming on the whole world. It, it could be. I haven't actually taken it that far. I mean, where I, I tend to connect these safe havens are back to right Exodus and Numbers and Exodus 8 and 9, where we're talking about the Goshens, where the Israelites would go, right, and they were safe from all of these these plagues. Um, sure. But I'd have to do some research on that. But that I do believe that that could actually fit, though quite well yeah i mean because it's it's come up so many times before as we go back and forth on like this pre-tribulation rapture because you know if uh, it makes you wish the word was just super clear on things but there's things that make you kind of question like okay who is the we know that there is a type of rapture event that happens before the great tribulation it's the male child is the male child a figure of speech for a group or is it you know, something spiritual? Is it an individual person? Is it meant to be a reference back to, you know, Jesus, you know, Yeshua? Uh, it's like, so you've got, it's just like, it's not clear. There's some kind of event that happens right before the dragon. Yeah. Uh, you know, if, if only that, you know, there was that, that clarity, but it's like we, that makes us look at, okay, so if there is some kind of removal, some kind of a separation, is it a rapture event or is it just a keeping safe? I I could see it be possible to be the rapture. It could be. I'm not yeah. completely sold on it, but I, I do think that there is types and shadows of what it could be. Yeah. But I, I don't, I, I just, can't say with con confirmation that that'd be the case. Yeah. I keep going back to, I've been, I've been prepping since 2019. Like mm -hmm. from the time that I realized we were in the end time events, it's just like, I knew I had to prepare for what was coming. Like, I mean, think about it. We've already gone through four years of tribulation. I mean, like the last four years have not been cake. Uh, you know, there's, there's been lock, you know, there's, there's just, there's been serious events that have affected the entire world and have dramatically affected people's lives and livelihoods uh, and even spiritual standing. Some people have come closer to God while others have been pushed further away. I agree. I agree. I mean, it, it's, it's an interesting concept that, some Messianic Jews that I, I do know or I've listened to do believe that we're entering the Great Tribulation. They look at an Enoch calendar and some of the things that the Lord's revealed to them. They, I'm not in that camp necessarily, but I can see where they, they may get that. But I think we still okay. have a good seven years to go. You think so? I have think you so. have you seen have you seen the calendar that we've been working on recently? So, you want to display it? I think you showed it last night, but I'd like to look at it. Uh, we need Chris on here to change the screen, but I can, I can, I can tell you, um, we're in the month of Nissan now. Yep. Uh, and like we've talked about, we've got Passover coming up here on the 14th. Oh, there he is. Yeah. So we have, so we're right here right now. So this is April 10th going on 11th. So Passover is, whoops, right here on the 22nd. Mm -hmm. And one of the really interesting days that I'm looking at here is the end of the festival of first fruits, because it happens to be 1,260 days um, to, a, so it, it happens to be a period of time between two festivals, two feast events, which are appointed times in, in mm -hmm. God's timetable. It happens to actually be one of the very rare counts where it's 1260 days between two feasts so it, it ends it starts on the end of first fruits and it goes all the way until the day of atonement in october 10 2027 it, so I think it's, what, it's, what could that possibly mean maybe that's this is you know when the uh you know the man child is perhaps mm -hmm. male child is born from the woman caught up to the throne the woman goes into the wilderness, and then we see the two witnesses, potentially. I, I'd agree with that. Wh whoever they are. So that's that's kind of like our our what we're looking for, uh, just because it's a it fits the it fits a very narrow pattern, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And I've considered a lot of different things for that one thousand two hundred sixty days. I think there is an interesting one where they they extrapolate it out into years. Have you seen some of those calculations where they? try and do like the 2,335 days or whatever, or 2,300 days. And they show yeah. how it's like years and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, this is one that I think is probably the most interesting just because I, it I, lines up between two festivals. Well, and I, and I think that's key, right? It, it, we start looking at some of these, these festivals and their feasts 
I do believe that's where the Lord speaks. So this actually, yeah. I have to study it. I have, I looked at it last night a bit when you were, you had uh, Dalton on as a guest, but I haven't looked at it in great detail, but it does make a lot of sense from what I, I had looked at. Yeah. Cool. Well, what else did you want to talk about? Well, that, that was kind of some of my, my key points. I don't know if you guys had any other specific questions in terms of, Timing. I mean, so we talked a little bit about the some of the events, I think, for this year. But I, I do think that moving into 2025, it's going to be quite dark. I think it's going to be somewhat of a crescendo yeah. and that we're going to have a, a really rough 2025 and very likely yeah. an awkward situation where we're going to really be um, having to work as a community and help each other out. Yeah, agreed. Well, one. Uh, so who do you think the two witnesses are? Because one of the reasons we started this channel is we wanted to to amplify their message should they be revealed during our lifetime. So, you know, we know they're going to be prophesying for 1,260 days. We wanted to take every, th every word out of their mouth and re reamplify it out to the, to uh, the believers. I, I do think it's, uh, I'm looking at probably Enoch and Elijah are kind of the, the two that I'm thinking. Sure. Because we'll, neither we'll one see. of them died. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, we're, I think we're between Enoch and Elijah or Moses and Elijah because of the Mount of Transfiguration. Uh, I, I, glimpse I, there. I think that's, a, that's possible too. Yeah. Uh, and then the, the, the one sand in the machinery on that one for me is Revelation 11, 4, where it calls them the two olive trees and the two lampstands. Mm -hmm. uh, because we know from Revelation 1, 20 that lampstands refer to churches. Uh, so is it potentially, you know, maybe Moses and Elijah and two groups of people, maybe the church of Smyrna and the church of Philadelphia, because they are the two churches with nothing to repent from, or maybe Jew and Gentile, or is it just trying to, it's, it's just like, it's like, why does that verse have to be there? Because it just causes me to have questions. <laughs> The, the things that will be revealed, I think, in these end days, right, where the, these mysteries are, are there and the Lord wants us to, I, I think, continue to inquire, right? I mean, in Revelation 4.1, right, he's saying, you know, he, he's asking us to come higher and there's an open door for us to, to walk through and for us to, to still see and ask for further revelation. So I don't know mm -hmm. if we'll know, but I, I do like the, the idea of the, the lampstands being the churches. I think that's very plausible. Yeah, isn't that interesting? I mean, if it wasn't in there, there it would be like open and sh it'd be an open and shut case. Like, okay, these are obviously two men because they die. They're left yeah. in the street, you know, but it's just like, why did they have to be called the olive trees and the two lampstands? <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I think God is pretty funny. Some of those things I think we're going to be laughing about for eternity. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I just look at it as I'll, I'll practice right now for, for what we're going to do. Right. I, I think we have a, I mean, you're asking if there's anything further. I mean, the way I look at some of this kind of in, in just concluding is that, um, you know, we're here kind of as a, as a trial run, right, to, to worship our Lord and Savior here on earth for what's going to be much greater when we get to heaven. But I just yeah. look at that like, do we not want to do our best to try to cross that bar with, with an A plus um, versus just getting in or just getting by? Because we want to worship in, right, with, with everything we have. So that's how I'm getting more and more and more motivated as we get through here to the, even though we know the times are going to be tough. I'll say this, we had um, the Stones of Zion folks here a, a few weeks ago. And, and I, and I bring this up not to bring them to the forefront, but there was truly what I believe to be what was meant in the end times and what the safe havens really should reflect. And I, I've said this as worshiping in spirit and truth. The Lord is, I know it's in scripture, but the Lord has really been speaking to me about that. But when you do that, working together as a unified front with brothers and sisters in Christ, the joy is unspeakable and the, the ministering of the gifts through the Holy Spirit just, just flows and you don't even have to ask about it. It just comes. And there was... I mean, it was just a great gift to see all this. And I think the the people that had joined us, it was a very intimate gathering, really walked away with it with something powerful that you just don't see. 
Um, but, but I think that's something that all of us should be looking forward to is when we get to that point and that pinnacle and that spirit is flowing, man, to be with our sisters and brothers that are actually worshiping the same way, man, I am telling you, it, it is off the charts. It was an it will amazing, be. It, amazing thing. And I want people to really be looking forward to that. And not It's going to be just, powerful. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. I can't even imagine it. It's probably going to be way way beyond what I can even imagine. Yeah, it's going to be the the spiritual power that's going to resonate will be a force that they will not be able to contain. It will be a formidable adversary to them. Yeah, I mean, and, and the Lord, right, we know we're victorious. The Lord is going to train us in what we need to know to be victorious. That's how I see Amen. it. I believe it. And we need to, you know, put a stake on it. I, again, kingdom purpose, kingdom promise, man. Hold on Absolutely. to it because it's coming. Right on. The, the um, reason why the timeline that I am mentally um, played out is by the progression of the events, the birth pains are happening closer and closer and closer together. Yeah. You know, if by the grace of our Lord that things slow down, we could see the timeline extend and you could be right. We could have years, but everybody that's paying attention sees the writing on the wall. There's not a day that doesn't go by now where something happens. It used to be you could go a month in between yeah. um, events to report on, but that's no longer the case. There's not a 20. If you miss 24 hours of events and just, you know, if you step away from it and come back, you feel like you've missed weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So much is happening so quickly. Well, uh, and it, right when Christ says that days were not shortened, I mean, so I'm not exactly sure what he means by that, but I do believe things are going to accelerate. It's, it, the Lord had mentioned this to me. His, my word of knowledge last week was amplification. And he was getting at amplification of the destruction because he's been telling me Extreme destruction is near. It's right at your door. Um, and I know a lot, that's going to be amplified. But as we mentioned earlier, the Lord also in his glory is going to be amplified even greater. So hmm. I just I can't look at one without looking at the other. And I don't think that anybody should. That's right. It's really a Christ follower, because, again, that's what's going to lead people to want to have what we have. Absolutely. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. Well, cool. Should we see if anybody in the uh, comments have any questions for you? Does anybody have sure. any comments? Questions? Questions, 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 folks. Shoot your questions so that we can answer whatever questions that you want. This is the time. I need to figure out this Q&A option on the chat. Every <laughs> time I turn it on, it like blanks everybody out, so I like freak out and turn it off. <laughs> I need to read up on how it actually works because yeah. it might actually allow us to like collect questions uh, during a presentation or when somebody is sharing. Uh, that way they don't get lost. I think that's how it works. Like I have to start it early. All right. Nothing? Nobody's got any questions? All right. Well, what do you guys want to talk about? What do you got, Joe? Yeah. What else did you... Go signs ahead, I'm in sorry. Israel. How about that? What signs in Israel are we looking for? I know there's let's a not, lot let's of Let's not mention that name. Effort. Let's not say that Gosh. name. But you already said it earlier. That's not fair. I thought <laughs> you were talking about the other ones. What are we, what are we <laughs> saying mean, instead? The, Our brothers the, and <laughs> across I, the I, I, the, the thing that I'm looking for is the red heifer sacrifice. Yeah. That, that's one of the key signs that I'm looking for as well. It, yeah. it, and I think the question is, is that the great abomination? That mm. we're that we're looking for. Yeah, we talked about that know. not uh, not uh, not all that long ago. Uh, is it could it be the the abomination that sets the the abomination of desolation that's Correct. set up? Yeah, I mean that that's it's one of the things thing. that I'm looking at, and then, then obviously the any type of peace deal that's mm. that's going to be struck. But I mean the, this this war as well, though. I mean that that broke out right in October of last year. I mean, that, that's a boundary war is what that is, to establish the mm -hmm. kingdom later. 
And so I, I'm just curious to see how this all starts unfolding as well in the end times. But obviously, they're they be in the time clock here in the in the center. We need to be paying attention to all of that as well. But I, so I, I'm looking at that and anything that's obviously affiliated, and I think all of us are doing the same. But I I would say that the next key thing is the the red heifer sacrifice. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, I think that's an important key, uh, key indicator. That or the revealing of the two witnesses of two guys who are un unkillable show up that can breathe fire that'll be a pretty good sign too uh oh here's yeah. okay so the questions are starting to come in so how do i word this one what are your thoughts on self-defense and your safe havens as far as if you're how do i word this if you need to defend the safe haven what are your thoughts on that i don't know if that's a really good question i've actually had some i'll, I'll see if i can answer it there has been some conversations I've had with other individuals who have been shown some of this as well. I think some of us will have, we will have to defend ourselves. And I think that the Lord is, is asking us to protect those that are in harm's way. I'm going to say it that way. Okay. I, we don't, and I'll say, we don't go out looking for it. It's more of a defensive strategy than it is an offensive strategy. Sure. There, there's going to be some missions that, I know this in, in speaking to some other folks in Safe Haven. And they have been shown by the Lord that they are going to be sent on dangerous missions into some very violent situations and to mm -hmm. rescue folks and bring them back into the fold, into, into the Safe Haven. Um, if somebody is in, again, I'm just going to use the term harm's way, you can define that in a serious, I'll just say in serious ways you are allowed from, from God's vantage point to defend yourself and that, that life. Agreed. Oh, and I will. <laughs> yeah, we're, so, we're well prepared in that regards. Yeah, no, I, I know you guys are. I, but I think there's, I, I think, again, a lot of these are, they're very difficult situations that we're going to be facing that we haven't had to face before. And, and we obviously need to make sure that, again, this is where trying to really be get into that deep relationship with the Lord to have that, that voice clearly in our head, knowing exactly what we're going to do. Now, this is where it's so key that people in safe haven, this is how I would like to structure mine. We haven't gotten to that point yet, but right. You have different sub teams. If you will, you may have people that are working more so on, on guardian. You're going to certainly have security. Another piece. I'm not sure if others have done. I haven't asked this, is a spiritual council of three whereby and now it may not always be possible i know some of these are going to have to be reactions going to be almost immediate and you won't have the, the ability to to work with a council but those that have the highest spiritual discernment potentially seers maybe that actually can get those types of clarifications to move forward i i personally believe that there's going to be need for a spiritual council really to discern people coming in and and those that that we shouldn't let in sure. um, because it's going to take all it takes is one person to learn the assets that you have in those communities and then that could completely upset everything so it's key there that you you have discernment that. You have is to. key discernment Correct. is key like you said and, and that's why when you're looking to select people into these safe havens that's why i said the selection process is so important because everything right in any type of leadership example, it starts at the top and then your next closest circle has to be so tight knit and they need to think appropriately and have Christ at the center. But they have to have that spiritual discernment within themselves as well. So what Kip asked here, is there a safe haven in Louisiana that you're aware of? I'm not aware of any in Louisiana. Louisiana is going to be, I, I hate to say this, but it's from what I understand and what uh, other people prophetically, mostly going to be around. underwater. Right? Yeah, it won't be around. The shorelines are going to recede about 100 miles at the minimum. Correct. Yeah. I mean, you kind of have to go, when I say central, central is a, a large area, right? Mid-Atlantic as well. I mean, but yeah, anything around your coastlines, I had, would have to pray about that, but I would stay away from that. Yeah, it's, um, you know, a lot of folks are asking about the safe havens and whatnot. So um, 
I'm going to create you an account so that you can log in and get set up. But um, I'm directing all the leaders in the community to communicate on there, um, just right. like um, others have. In this way, we will have a safe place where we'll be able to exchange ideas and communicate with the entire body of Christ. And, you know, it's it's one of those things where it will be a safe environment where, you know, it's we don't have to worry too much as if we were operating on an open public network. So uh, we're right. doing the best that we can to um, maintain a, a safe environment and, you know, really make sure that everyone that comes through the door for the most part is has the same common goal as us. You know, their folks are constantly slipping through the cracks, but luckily a lot of yes. the moderators, they pick up on, you know, typically just off of their activity and the way they phrase and state stuff mm -hmm. and they constantly bring it to our attention but it, it's uh, watchful did an incredible job building this and i'm i still am so appreciative for all his hard work he he made this thing in a few weeks which would have taken normal coders a year to do did, did you guys have you seen that there's a map that kind of has circles in it throughout the u.s of where those safe havens could be located. Have you ever seen that map? I don't think so. You got it. I have that map. This is a book called Strategic Relocation. Yeah, I've heard that, that is, that it has been circulated in our community. This has almost everything um, as far as all the natural resources, lots of the safe havens. It was just updated in March. Um, but what you're referencing is more on more on like a low key uh, map, not Correct. something that's a generally published. That that's helpful for yeah. if you need uh, fresh water sources or yeah. a variety of things. But I'm talking to someone now that's going to be providing us uh, a database like that that we're going to share on the social platform that all the different leaders of these communities can provide input on um, but the key has been is providing an online area where people feel safe enough to provide that information understood agreed yeah so there, there was a map that that someone the lord had given them a map and circled the areas within the u.s of what was hmm. considered the safe zones i'll, I'll find it for you oh that's I interesting mean, I, I kind of overlay that with what you have there and then you have maybe two sources to work with. Yeah, but but you nailed it though. Staying away from the coastlines, uh, staying away from the Mississippi. Uh, that runs from north to south. From what I understand, that area you want to avoid. Um, yeah. You know the edge of Tennessee to where uh, you know that whole entire Mississippi mm -hmm. line you would want to avoid. Um, your best locations will be in hilly mountainous terrain, uh, the Appalachians, the Rockies, you know, out Midwest in the Colorado areas and stuff of that nature. Elevated, elevated grounds, um, which is why Dalton is focusing on, you know, South Tennessee in that mountainous area. Um, the area that I'm in in North Georgia, north of Atlanta, is elevated and uh, close to the Blue Ridge Mountains as well, so we have access to even higher grounds if need be. But uh, being away from that center line, the Mississippi line, and the West Coast, the East Coast, on you know within a hundred miles of the edge, you don't want to be in Florida. <laughs> nope. Uh, matter of fact, you want to be you want to be completely away from the Panhandle. Um, mm, that, yeah. that whole edge of the Gulf of Mexico, I would not recommend you want to be, um, a hundred miles at the minimum North of that. But, um, it, it's a good point you made about that map. Uh, and it's something I'm working on to gather more, uh, data for everybody in the community. Yeah. And, and the, the key piece is, is water and, and right now, right. This is where I think that the Lord has to lead you where to go too. Yeah. He knows where 
after these, I'm just going to call them geological changes, right? Whether it be earthquakes right. and volcanoes, things are going to change, right? I mean, the, the earth is heating up, but where, where are those pockets of the resources that he's going to provide to his people? And so that, that's where water is going to be just absolutely essential. So absolutely, there's, there's certain states and certain areas within certain states that obviously have that, which is what I think Chris was bringing forward. So, yeah. So here, here sorry, I'm going to change the subject here. So yeah. you want to go ahead and go, Christopher? No, no, you're good. Okay. So here's, here's something that is I've seen coming up a couple of times in our chat. Now, this also has to do with Kip, because she had did a presentation on the bride uh, not going through the tribulation, and there are several people that are concerned. Why would why would Jesus send his bride through a great tribulation? Is that something that you could speak to? I, I, I'll attempt to, yes. Yeah. So, so I'm going to come to it from a, from a personal perspective here as well. And, and sometimes we have to, I think, expand our scope outside the U.S. too. In the U.S., we've had... I, mercy and grace has been extended we've had a protective covering over this nation i believe when this eclipse had had come through it sealed as people and i believe that covering has been removed so i I think we've had an extended period time of time of peace if you will for the, the the body of christ in america if you look outside america there the persecution is immense I know some things that are going on in China, and I, I won't speak about it here, but I can tell you that it is extremely bad. And so why, why is it that America, I, I just posed the question, why is it that Americans get, get off getting up into the rapture, but every other country in the world has to go through such extensive um, persecution? It, so put that aside. Then the other piece is, I mean, The Lord has spoken in there as well, right? He refines us, and it's through trials and tribulations in our life and our afflictions that we go through to refine us. And I'll speak for myself here. There's no way I believe that I'm ready. I have walked a pretty good walk, but I still know that I'm not ready. Now, that doesn't mean anything to anyone here, but I I think that oftentimes we also have a very... uh, like when you're doing a self-examination on on yourself for a, in a corporate job and you know rate yourself and you know then your boss rates you you know what's Christ's standard and, and really do we think that we actually are pure enough to make it there yet I personally don't believe so because I think that the affliction and the fire that we get put through as is stated in scripture is necessary to get us to that higher place I just don't think it's, I mean, in addition to after the tribulation of the day that I spoke about, I just don't think that it's it's now. I think more affliction and, and fire needs to come. Oh, for sure. Oh, it's just getting started. Yeah. Yeah, these are the birth pains. Yeah, it's, yeah. They're going to become more intense and closer together. And as time moves along, especially after past Monday, which... In my personal opinion, that was the marker of something, a transition period. I agree. Um, I really think within the next um, 30, 40, 90 days, we are going to see some very interesting things unfold. And if we don't, God bless. You know, uh, I I agree. I'm just, you know, I would just, I'd rather prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Correct. But Amen. if if stuff doesn't happen, it's because of the grace of God. I'll tell you that. I, I agree with you on that 100. percent I'm yeah. quite honestly surprised that we got this far into 2024. Actually, <laughs> yeah, still, right. Just my own opinion. I mean, it, and yeah. I look at it from the standpoint of the sin-soaked nation that we are. We we have got. I mean, the 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 land is crying out, right? That mm. innocent blood is crying out, and I'm not going to get to all that. I think everyone knows what that means. Yes, I, 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 the, the earth can't take it any longer. Mm. And that's why I was, I was mentioning there's a, there's a pastor, John Kilpatrick, some of folks may know of him, but he, he put out a special warning. It was three or four weeks ago. Now this gentleman, he's a pastor down in Alabama. I, I like him. I, he speaks the truth. He's an end times 
type pastor. And he put he was one of the same individuals that put a warning out two days, I think, before 9-11. And he was correct in that. Um, I think there was another warning he put out, and he was correct in that about a month later. So he does have a, a, a history of actually being warned by the Lord and communicating. And he doesn't normally communicate um, outside of his church. And hmm. he did make it a special um, notice on YouTube that, in fact, that's what the Lord told him, is that the land is crying out, the judgment is coming. And, and I do think it's near when that is. I gave you what I think my timeline is, but I agree 100% with Chris here that 30, 60, 90 days, if we don't see anything, it is by the mere grace of God. Hey, what's Rafa, guys? What is Rafa? Is that um, an Islamic? Uh, I, I just... Uh, Someone just posted that the Holy Land just struck <clears throat> Rafa, whatever that means. Uh, that's in that Palestine, is, I think. Yeah, I think it's in Palestine. Oh, that was the southern part of that area that they had been completely leveling from head to toe. That was the yes. one stronghold that was left by hmm. the hummus that they were hmm. um, holding out in. That was their last stronghold. Uh, they had been waiting on all the local populace that were not involved in the combat. They were migrating back north to go back to what was left of their homes. And they had been saying that that was their last pit stop for that campaign. But were waiting for all the civilians to exit the area. They must have green-lighted that. And oh boy, they're going to light it up. I mean, it's, it's, it's that expansion of territory, right? I mean, it's, yeah. it, and I still, I still pray for the innocent people lost here. Right? And I think that's oh, it's awful that, that, that we have to still realize, right? I mean, these, we're hoping these folks actually somehow the crisis revealed to them. Yeah. There's, you know, interesting that you mentioned that and we've mentioned this before, but um, at the end of last year, earlier, the beginning of this year, there was massive amounts of dreams and visions from warriors in that area that laid down their arms and came to Christ because of them all having the same dream and vision on the same night. Yeah, I mean, that that's just beautiful. Yeah, that it's awesome. awesome. And, and that's how the Lord reaches these areas that are completely reject any type of uh, gospel being allowed in there. They give the dreams and visions to them. And that culture takes their dreams very serious. Yeah, and, and I was listening to, to some NDEs as well of, of former Islamic um, or Muslims that actually Jesus showed showed them himself to them, right? And, and they were yeah. in tears that he's real and he really is the mm. savior. I mean, it, it, those are amazing. Just absolutely. Those are some of my, my favorite, uh, Eddie's actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. yeah. They, um, you know, it, it, the bottom line is, is that, you know, really Christ, the Bible and everything about it is very supernatural. And, uh, understanding how supernatural it is, is, uh, is imperative to understanding the scripture and how God operates. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. You have any other questions, Washball or Chris? Uh, I'm, I'm I good. Unless... I have lots of questions, but we'll be here for hours. <laughs> 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 oh man, I got some stuff that I'd love to get into. Me and Chris were talking about before the show, but we'll end up going for another two hours. So, uh, thank you so much for being on the show. I think, uh, you know, what you're sharing about these safe havens is essential, you know, getting into, you know, hopefully it's not too late. You know, if, if you're in a position to where you're not in a safe haven, if you're alone somewhere, you don't have any networks or any contacts, now is your time to make that change. Do something about it now. If you've been, if you're new to the faith, seek out fellowship, seek out a household, seek out a church that you can connect with uh, to get into a safe haven. Uh, you know, this is the time to really start looking to the household uh, for, you know, 
I, I'm reminded of Matthew, I think it's the end of Matthew 24, Matthew 25, where it talks about while um, the master was delayed, was really indicative of, of people. You know, some people turn to, you know, being drunkards and beating the servants. Uh, others sought out to help, uh, you know, taking care of those who, who were in need. Be be the ones who, who turns to helping the ones who are in need. Don't don't slump into being a drunkard. Don't slump into beating the servant. Uh, now is not a, not the time to do that. Now is the time to be vigilant. Um, you know, if you're not saved, get saved. Uh, you know, if you're still on the fence, you know, contact us uh, or find a good church um, to, you know, if you have any questions that you need to get answered, time is running out. Uh, so thank you so much for coming on the show with us tonight and sharing about these safe havens. I think it's, this is something that we've been talking about. It sounds like uh, these safe havens are, you know, highly organized and structured um, that you guys have, have, have put together. Uh, is there a place that they can go for information on the safe havens? That's what we're going to uh, build. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's what Chris was alluding to. Like, because they're, they've are they been somewhat hidden, I don't have anything right now. Wow. But if, if No if one wants to, yeah. If they contact Chris or, or you, I mean, I'm happy to, to provide an email and we can, we can, I can chat okay. with them. Yeah, I, like you had guys had mentioned, Joe, and folks are going to be very apprehensive providing that information on a public um, platform because yeah. this information will not want to be provided to the masses or to the adversary that can use it against us. So yeah. it, it, what I'm going to do is I'm actually the group that I'm going to build on our platform will be password protected for only the partners on our platform will be able to access this information. And about 25% yeah. of the users on our platform are considered partners. So even if you're, you know, get access to the site, this information will not be available to the public members. This will be a partner access only just because the partners that um, are the partner members, they, I know exactly who they are. We have, you know, you know, 20, 30% of our members are the partner members and you know, it's, it's, it's rather simple. The, the partnership is, you, it's, it's as cheap as $10 a month, but if folks will, if that's something that folks can do, it kind of takes away a little bit of the apprehension of who you actually are. And, you know, we verify a few things, but you know, the, the partners have become a key component to our community. It, it allows us to do a lot of the things that we do. And we've become uh, a very close family in the partner membership. Everybody knows everybody. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's been really a blessing and we're very, very grateful for the, the partners that donate to our platform. No, that, that's awesome. And, and again, thank you guys for having me on and, and hearing my, my story and my, my opinions of some things, but also what the Lord is leading me to. So bless you guys and in, in your ministry as well. And I hope to stay in contact. Oh yeah. yeah absolutely. Uh, we'll definitely have you back on if you're open to it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. For us, it's all about, networking and building relationships with the other leaders in the community. Um, typically once we've had someone on, they continue to come back on on a regular basis just because we like to build that family network with everybody. Um, you know, cause we are the body of Christ. Amen. I agree. Amen. I'm amen, expecting, amen. I'm expect, I'm hoping and expecting that through, through all the tribulation that we'll be able to stay on the air. And I'm really hoping that the two witnesses that we actually have access to <laughs> the 1,260 days of their prophecy so that we can get on here and be like, Oh my God, did you hear what they said today? That would be awesome. Wouldn't that be awesome? Oh, it's going to, Oh, that'd be it. I'll be there with my GoPro and my camera and a <laughs> flak and a flak jacket and a helmet. <laughs> I mean, like, can you imagine hearing from Enoch, who's been around since the very beginning, or from Elijah, who stopped the rain? Man, yeah. Exciting days ahead. Well, guys, thank you so much for coming out with us. Uh, we really, truly enjoy this special fellowship that we guys, we have with you every evening. 
And uh, I see one question in the chat uh, from Q. It says, how does one become a partner? It's actually really simple. Uh, you just go to our social platform, twowitnesseslive.com. Um, it, the membership is free uh, to be a partner. The There's no additional perks for the different partnerships. Some people donate 1000 a month. Some people donate $10 a month. There's, there's no difference. It's just whatever your budget allows you to donate to us on a monthly reoccurring basis. It helps support the platform and support our mission. And, um, you know, it can be as little as $10 a month if that fits into your budget. But it's as simple as that. And you just uh, you register on our platform. And if not, you know, the membership is still free and you still have access to 90% of the social platform. But we would love to have everybody out there. And Joe, thank you so much for coming on and and blessing us with your time and your knowledge. Yep, absolutely. Bless you guys and all your listeners as well. Thank you much. Okay. Well, everybody have a wonderful night, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow on Kip's show. Shalom, shalom. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone.